Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a collab video with Lisa over at the Lollipop Box and she has sent me a beautiful Lollipop Box kit and I'm going to be doing some of my usual journaling cards. Now I've done these in a blog post which I will link but I've never done them on video before so Lisa thought it'd be a good idea for me to share them on video. I also did a workshop at Mrs Brimble's Jingle and Mingle last year where I created some journaling cards and got everyone in the workshop to create their own watercolour journaling cards. So that is what I'm going to be doing today but I'm going to be using the things from the lollipop box in order to do that. So as part of the lollipop box there were some stickers by Mrs Brimbles and it's all a sunshine theme. It's absolutely beautiful. There came a DIY kit which came in one of these little packets and it says that there's a pot of brusho, there we go, and watercolour paper and see the DIY instructions in the creative zine. So there is a creative zine here and it tells you how you can put together some bits and bobs here um, for journaling cards so it's about using the stencil i think the stencil is in here actually lisa's included lots of beautiful goodies there is this beautiful stencil and there is this little pot of brusho and that brusho looks gorgeous i've not got that color so i'm excited to play with that and then to put together basically your own cards so this is one that lisa included in the kit that she'd done and i also have one here and i put together this page for a travel journal that i did and that's going to be my first page in my travel journal and i use the stencil there and i used it with some distress ink i'm just going to get on with it i think um rather than sitting here talking i could talk for days and days and days Right, so I'm going to put the stuff to one side and I'm going to actually get the cards done first so that I can show you um, how you might do them. So I've cut them down to size and these are, I think, the three by four inch, something like that. They're the typical journaling card size anyway. So I've cut some watercolour paper down to size and I've got a bigger one there as well. And I've pre-prepared four here. That one's a smaller one. And what I did is I put some heavy texture paste and used a stencil to decorate. I'm going to have a go with some watercolour first. And then I'm just going to see where it takes me really. So some bits I'm going to talk, some bits I'm not going to talk. It all depends. So I have got here my trusty... Daniel Smith watercolours. They're a bit of a mess at the minute, to be honest. And then I've got my Jane Davenport Brights as well. So I'm going to be using a mixture of those in my painting. Let's see. So I, because the kit is so sunshiny, I want to do lots and lots of sort of bright colours. So I'm going to do lots of yellows, lots of orange to really lift the colour off the pages. So this one strikes me as sort of sunshiny. So I'm going to do the, I think it's the Ultra Yellow here, just to make it seem a bit sunshiny. And I think I'm going to add a bit of orange in there as well. So this is the Daniel Smith. This is the Perinon Orange. So I'm going to give that a whirl. I don't think I've used this one before, the orange. So we'll see how it goes on. Oh, that's beautiful. And I really like how it sort of blends in with the texture paste and the texture that I've created on the page as well. So with these, you don't really, you know, you don't have to stick to a rigid plan. This is what I was telling people in the workshop. You can just be creative and, and do what you like with them, really. It's your journaling card. 
there's no right and wrong way of doing it it's just getting some color onto the page and just playing around with it really so i'm going to mix a bit more yellow in there and add a bit more water i think there we go that's better now the only thing with this is the cards tend to come up a little bit so it's just about making sure that they stay flat and you can of course take them down but for this purpose i'm not going to do that so i'm just going to put that there so i'm going to leave that one to dry and move on to some others and i'm going to try all sorts of different things i think with this with these cards i'm just going for bright colors because i'm going to decorate them with the bits from the lollipop box after so this is the what color is this i think it's the op opera pink the daniel smith and it's such a vibrant color so pretty and i'm literally just dabbing it i'm not really going for any sort of set pattern here and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it with some Jane Davenport now. So I'm going with the bright yellow, which is the Buzzy. So we'll see how those two blend. They look quite nice together, actually. I quite like that. So it's sort of bringing out orange sort of side to it as well. Oh, that's so pretty I'm liking it so I think it needs a little bit more color so I'll just stick a bit more on but again you can be quite subtle with these you don't have to be very bright with them would be very brash a lot of people say but I can't paint well you can paint you just stick it on your brush put some water on stick it on your page that's it that's all you need to do okay so i'm going to go in with a bit more pink and if you add more water you can just like literally just drop it in and that is such pretty colors okay so that one's going to dry as well this the problem is with this bending look it's all going to the bottom be all right once it's dry okay so i think what i'm going to do so i am going to do these ones but not on video so i'll do those another time so i'm just going to do some plain ones as well i'll do two plain ones so i'm going to do four for you today so i think we're going to have some blue now and this is again jane Davenport brights and i think this is the 70s eyeshadow and what a cool name that is, 70s eyeshadow. So this is more like a sort of sky colour. So I'm just doing this as a sort of wash across the page. So I'm going to add some of the shiny blue as well from the Daniel Smith. This has got a bit of a shimmer. I think it probably doesn't doesn't go over the other colour very well. So I'm not sure that's working. So what colour can I add with that? I think we'll go this one. This is quite a bright one from the Jane Davenport. And I think this is called either Frida or Mystic. I can't figure out which one it is. So again, I'm just going to wash it across. And I just love how colours blend. I just think they're so pretty. I absolutely love watercolour. It's my favourite thing ever, just to sit and do some watercolour. It's so therapeutic. And then the last one, I'm going to leave blank because I'm going to use some brush out and the stencil. So I'm just going to put these to the side so that they can dry. And I will just close my lid. And move 
those out of the way. I am going to use the stencil that came with the kit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold it down with a couple of clips so that it stays in place because I don't want it moving around whilst I'm doing it. These clips are like stuck together. Here we go. So I'm just going to clip the very corner of the stencil to keep it in place. So with the brush out, I'm just going to just put a little bit of water where the stencil is. And you've just got to be careful with these stencils because they do lift. So it's probably best to put four clips in to be honest okay so i'm quite excited i love using brusho i absolutely love it i'm just going to put a tiny little dab through the stencil so again you can like put more in certain places where you want it to be a little bit brighter and then mute it down in other places where you don't. The other issue is when you lift the stencil it's all going to run so it's probably best for you to let it dry whilst the stencil is still on. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute and I'm just going to go back to this one and I'm going to add a bit brush on. So I'm just going to put a little bit more water and then just drop some brush home into it. And I think I'm going to add a bit more brush home as well. So I might try the sandstone and put a little bit of sandstone in there and just sort of drop that on the page. Like so. I'm not going to put too much because again with brush home, you only need a tiny, tiny amount. Now acrylic nails are really not good are they for crafting. Probably best if I put a little bit on the lid and just drop that on there. There we go. That's probably going to be a better effect to be honest. So I thought I'd got some water spritzer, but I haven't, but I have got some acrylic paint mixed in with alcohol ink and water. So I'm just giving it a good shake and I will just give it a quick spritz and see how the brush show reacts with the alcohol ink. That is looking gorgeous. Oh, I love it. That is really, really pretty. So I have my four cards here. And I'm just going to give them a quick blast to dry them. Okay, so I've given them a quick blast in order to dry them. So I'm going to take this off and see what the damage is. <laughs> you never know with stencils. I find the easiest way of using stencils is by using the Distress Ink. I will show you how I do that in a minute. Yeah, so, you know, it's not the most ideal um, doing it like that because you do get a sort of messy look, but I quite like that. I think that's quite pretty. So I'm just going to show you using the ink instead and show you what effect that gives. Now, bear in mind, my stencil is slightly wet from the paint. So for this, I'm just... Um, using an ink pad and putting it onto like a stippling brush and I'm just making sure that there's a lot of ink on there now this might come out a funny colour because it wasn't a clean pad so it's looking a little bit purple rather than orange but that's okay I don't mind so then you just sort of stipple it down in a very strange colour this 
not looking the colour like the colour that I put on at all. But again, it's fine. I'm just showing you the technique and showing you what you can do with the stencil. And this always gives a really sort of bright look through the stencil as well. And you just really just be quite rough with it. And then when you lift it up, there you go, you've got the colour. It's not the colour that I used, but that is okay. So again, if you want, then wanted to put some more sort of ink, you can just by rubbing it on. And then again, you can sort of blend it with the blending tool. And that's so pretty. And it's, you know, it's a quick journaling card that you put together in a couple of minutes. I'm going to start embellishing. These are the stickers that came with the lollipop box kit. And these were from Mrs. Brimble's. So I'm going to try a little sunshine, I think in the middle there how cute is that that just looks gorgeous so that is so pretty and then there is a little sticker there what says hello sunshine so i'm just going to add that to it put that there at the bottom so these are really quick ways that you can just make journaling cards and then stick them into your projects stick them into your scrapbooks, put them into your travel journals, your creative journaling, whatever you want. And it's just really, really pretty. I think I'm going to leave that one as it is, like so. And then I'm going to have a look at the bits in the kits as well. So this, this is some sticky notes. So I'm going to try cutting that up. And I think it's going to go onto one of my cards. Might be quite good on this one, actually. Oh, it could it could go quite nicely on this one. Yeah, I'm thinking that sunshine there is going to look really, really nice. So it's going to go on this card. So I'm just going to cut it a bit more carefully. So that I can blend it in with the card. This is the first lollipop box I've ever had and I absolutely love it. So I will be getting some more of these because they're just so pretty. Right, I'm going to stick it now. My glue is rubbish. I've run out of all my decent glue. Oh, what is that? That looks like it's decent glue. Aha, I found some glue. That is a good call that I found that because that other glue from Wilco's is just not very good at all. Right, so I'm just going to stick this at the top of the card. Like so. And then I'm going to trim it after. So I'll just turn it upside down to trim it so that you can see where it overlaps. And then just literally cut the edges off. So that it's flush to the card. There we go. That is nice. I'm quite liking this effect. This sort of dappled effect that it's created. Okay, so then what you can do is you can add sort of borders to it. And again, you don't have to be neat with these. I quite like the messy border style on journaling cards that you can do. Um really don't need straight lines straight lines to me on things like this just ruin it to be honest i think it's so much better with sort of messy lines and i think that just sort of lifts the card and just really brings it out that is so nice i'm really liking this card so let's have a look what else we've got in the kit so there are also some die cuts so I'm going to open these and have a look at what we have. I really should not be doing craft videos with acrylic nails. Right, let's see. These are beautiful. These are so, so pretty. 
absolutely gorgeous so sunshine i think that is the one this is the one that i need so again with die cuts just a little bit of prit stick is fine you don't need to use fancy glue prit stick does the job of most things i find so i'm just putting that there at the bottom And that's the first finished card using the brush show, using a bit of the post-it note, add in a die cut and add in a border. Um, lovely. And then there's the second card, which is quite a simple one. Obviously, it would look better if my colour had gone on orange. Um, and as you can see, I did this one orange and that looks much better. Um, so there we go. So there's those two finished. So let's see, what can we have on this one? I think, again, we need some kind of sunshine. If I turn it that way round and have the sunshine at the top, then I think that's perfect. Now there was lots of embellishments in the kit. Um, one of the embellishments was this which is threading um which you can put on corners so again if you're quite crafty you could sew that on um you could sew it on the edges like that but i'm saving this to put on a dashboard so that will be a totally different video i think when i get around to it i have got a sewing machine but i've not set it up yet so i really do need to do that right and i think it needs a phrase so i think here comes the sun is perfect so these are all going to be used in my holiday travel journal when i go to palma nova this year so i think we'll have that at the bottom like so there we go and i don't want to put too much on these because i don't want to spoil them so i think i'm going to do another border on this one but I think I'm going to use a white Posca pen for the border. And this is quite subtle. I'm just going to go over it again just to make it stand out a little bit more. There we go. So that's the third card done these do not take very long at all and again it's completely up to you how you do this and sort of what you do with it now in addition to that you also have a zine which you can cut up so you can cut up bits from the zine and put those onto your cards as well um, I'm not going to do that I'm going to use the bits from the kit as well. Um, and then there's also these like little cute buttons as well, but I haven't got my glue gun out. So if I had my glue gun out, I'd probably put those on as well. So I think for this one, I'm going to use some of the stickers. And I've got a little bit of a bodger there. So I'm just going to put the sticker in the corner to really make that sort of stand out. I think on this one, I'm going with the Feeling Bright. I'm going to have it quite high up, I think, so that I can then write on the journey journaling card when I'm on holiday and I can put some little journaling things there. So, yeah, so I don't want to put too much on it. I think I might go with a little cloud at the bottom. As a sort of contrast to the sort of, sort of sun slash flower at the top. So I'm just going to do it so that there's a bit of border showing. There. Yeah, that's perfect. I really like that. I love how the colours have blended as well. Couldn't really tell until they dried, but they do look really good. Okay, and then we've got this one. 
and I think this one needs a you bright in my day because this is such a bright card so again I'm going to go at the bottom I'm going to go right at the very bottom on this one now some distress ink Trying to get my ink so it's back orange again, but it doesn't look it. Just gem generally rub the ink straight onto it. There we go. So I quite like that. It's more of a sort of burnt orange now. Right, so what other cards have we got here? Flowers. I don't think we're going to go with flowers. I think it's all a bit sunshiny, isn't it? So I think maybe a sunshine there. And it's just hard to glue over sometimes when you've got a sort of raised area. And my hands are really dirty as well, so that's not helping. <laughs> so I think with this one, I'm going to... Maybe do some writing in gold on this. Give it a go. I don't know how well this is going to translate onto here. So this is a it's a Crawford and Black. Yeah, it's a Crawford and Black, and it's one of the alcohol ink pens. And I don't even know where I got it from, to be honest. I've had it. It's one of them that I've had for absolutely ages but it writes quite nicely over paint so there we go so that's her sun and probably just going to highlight it a little bit with the Posca and that really brings it out then I've got the uni pin and it's water and fade proof pigment ink so I'm going to go over that just to really sort of bring out the writing and generally it goes over paint quite well it doesn't necessarily go over paint when it's still soaking wet um, just a word of a warning there, but it's really nice for outlining your letters. It does go a bit funny every now and again, so you just need to just wipe it off. But these pens are amazing. I think it was Anna Brim that got me onto these pens and I use it for everything now. It's perfect for my planner and it's perfect for art. There we go. So that is my last card with the sun and I think that's really cute. You can see I've made a mess as well on one of my cards as I've been testing but I might actually use that for something. Stick some embellishments over it because sometimes when you're just messing around it can create the best bit of art so there we go i hope you have enjoyed that my little quick tour of creating journaling cards and how you can do it i will link the blog post and i will put it up there so that you can see the blog post as well for different ideas but i've absolutely loved using the lollipop box kit so please do head over to lisa's website and i will link both the shop website and her blog and Instagram pages. I will link those all below so that you can see how you can get a lollipop box as well. So I hope you've enjoyed. Please do subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications. Bye.